Welcome everybody to Waldsman's uh, End Games. Today I'm looking at uh, the ending of Rook versus Rook and Pawn and explaining how to defend this ending in front of the opposing pawn. And we're going to have a look at the game played between Erling Folfsen and Fred Reinfeld in New York City back in 1930. As, uh, as many of you will know, Fred Reinfeld was a prolific chess author. He published over a hundred chess books, and in fact, uh, he wrote over 260 books of every kind. I recall uh, reading in a chess magazine when I was young, uh, David Bronstein being hailed as the world's best chess book writer, whereas Fred Reinfeld was hailed as the world's best rapid chess book writer. Uh, but to pay Ranfeld due respect, his books got a lot of people into chess. And when I was 12 years old, uh, I'd just uh, been taught the moves of the game by my father, I went to the local public library to see if they had anything on chess. And I found Tarash's Best Games of Chess edited by Fred Reinfeld. And that was the very first book on chess that I read back in the mid-1970s, and I thoroughly enjoyed that book. Although, as we'll see, Reinfeld misplays this particular ending, I've chosen it for its instructive value. Let's face it, everybody makes mistakes in chess, including the most famous names, and we can all learn from each other's errors. Okay. Well, a lot of players lose rook versus rook and pawn endings, even as here, when they've managed to get their king in front of the enemy pawn. And the most common reason for this is a failure to mount a frontal defense with the rook. I think players remember the dictum that rooks belong behind past pawns. Uh, and that's, that's true in some situations, if you're the guy with the extra pawn. If you're defending, though, placing the rook in front of the pawn on the first rank generates defensive options, especially if the enemy pawn is not yet far advanced. So the first option it generates is, is checking the enemy king away and or attacking the pawn. And the second option is that of opposing the enemy rook and offering a trade into a drawn king and pawn ending. Now, additionally, I think players are put off mounting a frontal defense if they can move their king to the short side of the pawn. And then they're tempted to give lateral checks from distance. And this is a misapplication of the Philidor defense which most tournament competitors have learned about it at some point, and which I'll remind you of uh, presently. Okay, so let's now examine the position. It's black to move. And in this position, there is a clear and present danger because white is threatening to play king g6. And black has got to do something about this. Well, much the easiest way for black to hold this position is to play king g8, making room for the rook. So after king g6, black can play rook f8. And white advances his pawn to g5. And now black swings his rook over as far as it will go to b8. And if white were to play here rook a1, then rook b6 check reaches exactly a Philidor defense setup. I remind you that in a Philidor, black's rook guards the third rank until the attacking pawn reaches the sixth rank, when it can either go back to the first rank or give some distant rear checks. So this, this position is now a well-known theoretical draw. Now, to prevent white 
carrying out his threat of king g6. The only other option for black in this position is to play rook g2, attacking the g-pawn, thereby presenting king g6. While this is also uh, is sufficient to hold, it's a much less natural plan than the king g8, rook f8 idea. But even so, after rook g2, white plays king f5. And here, the only move um, for black to, to hold the position is the move king g8, which is, is far from obvious at all. And that's um, the reason why I much prefer the plan of king g8, king f8. But even so, after king after g5, now black can swing his rook over to b2, going for a philidor. White's alert to that. He present, he, pre, he plays rook a6, preventing the philidor setup. But the rook can drop back to the first rank, and now black is completely safe. And the position again is a theoretical draw. Well, unfortunately um, for Reinfeld, he didn't um, find either of these two uh, drawing ideas. And instead he played rook b2 immediately. And this is a losing move. And it's a, a losing move because it doesn't stop white from playing the threatened king g6. I think that Reinfeld must have been relying on the movie played rook b6 check trying to establish a philidor, but unfortunately, White himself can now get a foothold on the back rank with King H7. And now White has a, an easily won position. We'll see what happened uh, though uh, in the rest of the game. Reinfeld tried Rook B5, blocking the pawn. White gave a check. King got out of check. White rook came back to defend the pawn. And now Reinfeld decided to play the move um, rook g5, which is a reasonable try. In this position, if black were to play king f6, then this can be met simply by king h6. Or alternatively, if black simply waits with, with rook c5, then white can play rook f4 check. Black gets out of the way with king e7. The king is aggressive, planning g5. Black stops that with a check, but the king can uh, go to g7. And uh, from there, the king is very strongly placed and can shepherd the advance of the pawn and it's easily won for white. So the move that Reinfeld chose was, was perfectly reasonable because it forces white to find the one winning move in the position, although admittedly it's not a difficult move to find, and that is the move rook f4 check. The king moves to e7. And now, as before, white uses his king aggressively, king h6. The rook finds its way to the back rank, but it's far too late. The pawn advances. Black gives a check. The king goes to g7, again a dominant position. The rook desperately attacks the pawn. Now white plays a nice little move, rook e4 check, forcing black's king further away. He advances the pawn. All black can do is to get some checking distance in, hoping uh, against hope. King goes to g8. Rook attacks the pawn. And now with g7, white achieves um, what's known as the Lucina position, uh, an ending that uh, you'll very likely be familiar with, that is uh, a standard win. And after king d6, rook h4, Reinfeld decided to resign the game. 
The winning procedure from here is, is very well known. In this particular uh, version of the Lucina, White doesn't uh, in fact need to build a, a Lucina bridge. The game might finish King e6, King goes to h7, threatening to queen the pawn. Black's only move to stop that is King f7, but now White can, can queen the pawn anyway, because after Rook takes g8, Rook f4 check wins the Rook. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you found this uh, explanation of uh, the first rank defense useful.